everyone! Welcome back to IntegralCalc.com. Today we're going to be doing another problem out of our analytic geometry section. And in this particular problem we've been asked to show whether the graph of the equation x squared plus y squared minus 6x minus 4y plus 13 equals 0 consists of either a single point or of no points. So this graph is, they've already told us, either a single point or it's no points. And oftentimes with these kinds of problems, the graph will either be a circle, a single point, or no points. And in this case, they've narrowed it down to us to either a single point or no points. What we need to do is get our, our equation here into the form given in this formula, which is the formula for a circle. So in order to do that, what we need to do is, on the left-hand side of the equation, we need to complete the square with respect to both x and y. So the first thing we're going to do is get our x terms together and our y terms together. So I'm just going to group these together, the x squared and the 6x, and I'm going to group my y terms together, so y squared and 4y. And then I'm going to go ahead and move the 13 to the other side, so I'll end up with negative 13 on the right-hand side. And um, again, we're trying to get this into this format over here. So again, you can see x terms together, y terms together, and then p consists of just a constant value. So like I said, complete the square. Remember that with completing the square, you want to take the coefficient on the first degree term, the first degree term meaning um, x to the first power or y to the first power, right? This is x to the 1 and y to the 1 as opposed to x squared or y squared. You want to take the coefficient on the first degree term, uh, divide it by 2, and this is assuming, remember, that the coefficient on your uh, second degree term is 1. So the fact that this is 1x squared and 1y squared, that we don't have some other coefficient on the front of those terms, means we can proceed with completing the square. If you had, for example, 2x squared, you would need to divide through by 2 to make the coefficient on the x squared term uh, 1. But in this case, that's already done, so we can go ahead, take the coefficient on the first degree term, negative 6, Divide by 2, so we get negative 3. Then you want to take your answer and square it. And when we square negative 3, we get 9. So 9 is what we're going to add to x squared minus 6x to complete the square. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the y term. So we'll take negative 4, the coefficient on the first degree term. Divide it by 2, we get negative 2. Now we take our answer and we square it. Negative 2 squared is 4, so that's what we'll be adding to this collection of y terms to complete the square. So we've got to add these things to both sides. So we'll get x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus y squared minus 4y plus 4 equals negative 13. And since we added um, 9 and 4 to the left to the left hand side, we have to add them to the right hand side as well, otherwise we would be changing the equation. So we need to keep things balanced. The reason we complete the square is because this is going to allow us to get our equation into the same format as the formula that we've uh, provided here for the um, equation of a circle. So x squared minus 6x plus 9 can be factored into x minus 3 times x minus 3, which can be written as x minus 3 squared. And now uh, this y squared minus 4y plus 4 can be factored into y minus 2 times y minus 2, which means we can write it as y minus 2 squared. Then over here on the right-hand side, negative 13 plus 9 plus 4 is 0. So we end up with 0 on the right-hand side. Now you can see that our equation is in the same format as the formula. We have x minus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals some constant. So now that we've got the same format, we can make an evaluation about the constant p over here. So to make a determination about whether this equation represents a single point or no points, what you need to look at is the constant on the right-hand side. So you want to make sure you've collected all of your constants on the right-hand side, and we have. There are no loose constants hanging out over here on the left-hand side. So we're just looking at 0. And when you look at 0, if, and we'll call it p, if p is greater than 0, 
then you're dealing with a circle. If P is equal to zero, then you're dealing with a single point. And if P is less than zero, if P is less than zero, you're dealing with no points. In this case, P is equal to zero. Our right-hand side is equal to zero. So that means that the graph of this equation consists of one single point. The graph is literally just one point. So um, that's it. That's how we can make that determination. I hope this video helped you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!